Hello and welcome to the channel and welcome to my review of Codex Adeptus Mechanicus and I have to tell you that this is my third take because um, I've already caught, recorded about 10 minutes of footage and it got very salty very quick because this book isn't great and um, it is on available for pre-order now it is released the following Saturday I want to thank Games Workshop for allowing some of us YouTubers and community producers to get their hands on these uh, preview copies so we can preview, we can review them and, and release them to the public out there and, and tell you what's in these books. Um, and I feel somewhat obligated, maybe not to trash all over this, and I feel somewhat obligated for those people out there who aren't familiar with the Adeptus Mechanicus to give this as a free hearing as possible. So I've edited those last bits out. I'm starting again. Codex Adeptus Mechanicus, available one week's time from Games Workshop. And right off the bat, there's no new units in here. There's no new models for us Adeptus Mechanicus players to enjoy. There's very few points tweaks if you've got your hands on the index. Um, Rangers and Vanguard went down a little bit and Arc Rifles on Catafron Destroyers went down a little bit and I think that's about it. Everything still much is the same. The only thing they've added here are Knights, which work in a very... It's, it's odd, we'll get to that. And the narrative in here. Okay, so so that's off the bat. Let's dive in. To, as, as you can expect from most Games Workshop products, the artwork is fantastic. And the narrative... Um, I found disappointing. If you want good ad mech narrative, read the Bible. Read Mechanicum by Graham McNeil. This will tell you everything you want to know about the Mechanicum, which later became the Adeptus Mechanicus. This is a good book. This is a must-read Black Library novel. Of course, there's going to be some people who disagree with me, but I am an ad mech fan. Um, and if you want a really, really good Adeptus Mechanicus book, and if you want a, a field unique and flavoursome and interesting Adeptus Mechanicus armies, then play 30k and get this book here, the Mechanic and Tagmata army list available from Forge World, and uh, add a few knights and add a few juicy models in it, and the narrative in here and the structure in here is, is spectacular. I've done a review of this one, it's over a year and a half old, maybe two years old now, and um, I recommend that to everyone who truly likes uh, uh, Adeptus Mechanicus. In the meantime, we have this book here. What can we say that's good about it? Well, um, we can say that it's not two books, finally, that it has been brought together under one umbrella. We can also say that uh, there is uh, chapter tactics, Forge World rules, there are stratagems, there are relics, there are bits in here which will add to your um, uh, Adeptus Mechanicus army and help them on the battlefield a little bit. And they're very situational. Coming just off the back of doing the Death Guard Codex review where every single Warlord trait was good. Where the psychic powers in there were interesting and new. Coming off the back of this, there's some real misses in some of the Warlord traits in this book. And some real misses in some of the Forge World uh, bits in this book. However, we have got Forge World chapter tactics, so to speak. Um, uh, they are households, knight households. Imperial knights are included in here. And they don't have access to those Forge World chapter tactics. They don't even have their own household uh, tactics either. Why we have that household keyword in this book, I can't tell you. Um, so yeah, so let's dive into the army lists. I'm quite happy to show you every page because they're available in other indexes out here. As I said, there's been very few changes. What you get at the start in Defenders of the Forge Worlds is they talk about the Forge World keyword. So if you are an Adeptus Mechanicus Forge World like Mars, then you have the Mars keyword. If it has the Forge World brackets, then you stick the Forge World in. There's different Forge Worlds that you can pick from, which uh, make your army function slightly differently. Some are good and some are really bad. Uh, there's household keywords as well for your Questus Imperialis or Questus Mechanicus in this case, which are part of the Adeptus Mechanicus Codex, which are part of the Adeptus Mechanicus army list, but do not benefit from Canticles of the Omnissiah. Canticles of the Omnissiah is unchanged from the indexes, and it only affects those units with the Canticles of the Omnissiah special rule. So that will be everyone in this book, apart from Imperial Knights. I would have liked it, and I wouldn't have thought it would be too broken if 
they allowed knights that were indentured, that were household knights for, from a forge world, to have access to chemicals of the Omnisar. For those people who don't know what it does, it's basically you roll a dice and you get a benefit for the units with that special rule for your turn. You do it at the start of a battle round, so if your opponent's going first, you roll in their turn, and then you apply this benefit. Um, or you can pick one. If you pick one, you can never pick the same one twice. So what you do is, if you want Shroud's Arm, which is the best one, which gets your armor save up by one, it, it acts, adds to your armor save as though you're in cover, unless you're in cover already. So it will be good, for example, to have Shroud's Arm all the way through the game. So when you're getting shot at, you've got a plus one to your armor all the time. The only way you could get it again and again is by rolling a four again and again and again. Um, because you can only pick it once. You can pick it once in the first turn, then roll again, and roll again. And we have re-roll fail from morale test, re-roll hit rolls of one in the fight phase, re-roll uh, shooting, uh, hit rolls of one in the shooting phase. We've got a chance to do mortal wounds on a six somewhere, whereas it literally is the electromancer. Roll a d6 for each enemy unit that is in one inch. So that's a whole unit. On a roll of six, the unit roll four suffers d3 mortal wounds. So... There is a 1 in 6 chance that you'll do D3 mortal wounds, which may be 1, uh, for units that are engaged with all of your units with Canticles of the Omnissiah in close combat. So if you've got 6 units in close combat, you're probably going to get D3 mortal wounds off. It is... why can't it be? Have a bit more bang for its buck. Um, yeah. So that's Canticles of the Omnisai, that's how it works. And if you have Belisarius Call, you can plus or minus one to that roll. So people who have got Belisarius Call, like myself, will be rolling for a three, four, five, because a three can go up one, a five can go down one, and then you get Shroud Sun, which is the one that you want, plus one to your armor save, with those you're in cover. You can do that with Belisarius Call because he has got the Lord of Mars rule. However, if you bring uh, Belisarius Call, he has the Mars keyword. You'll notice that the Tech Priest has the Forge World keyword. The Skatari Rangers have the Forge World keyword. You can turn these into Martians. You can make that Mars. Join them along with him. Or you'll pick another um, uh, Forge World and drop Belisarius Call as a HQ character. Because the Tech Priest Engine Seer has now become a HQ. This is the only change from the slots that I can see in the book. Previously, this was a, an elite choice. And all those players out there who didn't want to play Mars, like, well, I have to bring three Tech Priest Dominuses. No, you don't have to anymore. You can bring a Tech Priest Engine Seer. You can bring a Tech Priest Dominus. And these are your two HQs. You can get your Battalion Detachment that way. There's been a slight change to some of their repair roles. So Call and Tech Priest Dominuses can repair themselves, D3 wounds on themselves each turn, every turn, and they can repair friendly units around them. Call can repair any vehicle of the Imperium once a turn, every turn for one wound, or he can repair D3 wounds on any Adeptus Mechanicus unit, which would include Imperial Knights, I think, because all of these ones have the Adeptus Mechanicus keyword, whereas the Knights in this book... The knights. the knights in this book have the Questor Mechanicus household keyword. Um, I'm assuming that he's healing these guys as well. Uh, it's not well written, but based on the fact that this is the Adeptus Mechanicus book and that they're in it, and some of the interactions with some of the rules later. Long story short, Kor can, can repair anything from the Imperium and D3 wounds on stuff in this book. These guys can repair... D3 wounds from stuff in this book, the Tech Priest and the Engines here, and one wound on Knights. You see, if these guys can just repair one wound on Knights, then clearly it means that Call can repair D3 wounds on Knights because it's written slightly differently. Long story short, Admech players, get out there, get yourself a few Tech Priest Engines here. I got one. Then you've got Skitari Rangers and Skitari Vanguard in the troop slot. They're unchanged from the uh, index. However, they've gone down a little bit. I think these are nine and these are eight points now. Um, these are your 
very small troops running around, little guys, they should be cheaper because there's no new units in this book, which means there's no transports. We are the only army, I think, without transports. Necrons have it right. Nids, yeah, even Nids have those drop pods coming down. Nids have transports and orcs and everyone has transports except us so your troops are out on the table from turn one despite the fact that we make all the transports that the imperium run around in all the day see salt i can't help it anyway we don't have any transports yet uh so your guys are getting shot at straight away so they need to be cheap troop options because they're gonna get lit up we have breaches and destroyers are still in here these are three wound troops they are slow um, they only advance D3, but they can always advance and fire their heavy weapons as though stationary. These ones are good for taking out vehicles. These ones are good for taking out elites. You have plasma cannons and heavy grav cannons. They throw down a lot of shots, heavy five, heavy D6 shots. These guys throw down a lot of shots, but they only hit on fours. Only hit on fours. So you need to use a canticles or you need to use some other ability to modify their shooting attack. For, so, for example, if you load a Catafron Breacher up with a Torsion Cannon, it's got one shot with a 50 50 chance to hit. So, two of these models together will be hitting once unless you modify their ballistic skill. No one takes core Torsion Cannons anyway. You're going to be taking uh, your heavy arc rifles if you want to crack vehicles. You're going to be taking uh, Catafron Destroyers if you want to crack elites or anything else. Um, I recommend just get destroyers now because vehicles have changed. Even though the heavy arc rifles do D6 flat damage when they hit a vehicle, they're still only strength 6 and most vehicles are toughness 7. Why or why is it strength 6? Why isn't this strength 7? Normal arc rifles are strength 6. Why can't it be strength 7? And you find, So you're firing two shots, you're hitting a 50-50 chance at the time, and then you're wounding a third of the time. You're, you're just not doing the damage with, with breaches. The math just doesn't add up. Anyway, those are your troop slots. Little cheap guys running around, or three wound toughness five tracked vehicles rolling around. I'll show you what they look like. Here's the little guys, some Vanguard, here are the big guys, some Catafron Breaches uh, on tracks rolling around all over the place. I'm sure you've seen these images already. Then we have Servitors, probably the worst unit in the game, I won't even waste my time. Cybernetic Datasmith, these chaps are an elite choice, you can run them on their own if you want to. And they can heal uh, friendly Castellan robot mod, uh, mana pools. Uh, with its Master and the Machines abilities, which are these guys, you need them to benefit from him. Uh, to um, You need them for him to, to do what he does. Sakar and Rust Stalkers are infantry. So movement 8, movement 8. Finally, we get into some quick stuff. Rust Stalkers have the ability to do mortal wounds if they hit on sixes in close combat. Their strength, or if they wound on sixes in close combat. Their strength four with a lot of attacks, three attacks or four attacks and relatively quickly. But with a toughness three and a four up save and no feel, no pain like they used to have, they die. If someone shoots or leans towards them, they die. And then we have infiltrators, same again. Toughness three, four up save, two wounds a pop. So they're very squishable. However, get them with your, get them with your taser goads. Their, their strength four comes to strength six. And when they hit on sixes with taser goads, every six to hit becomes three hits. So with three attacks and four attacks, uh, two attacks and three attacks, sorry, these guys get a lot more hits in. Is that a change? Let me check my uh, index. Yeah, that's a change. I didn't notice that before. Infiltrates have two attacks and three attacks, and they used to have three attacks and four attacks. Why, oh, why have they dropped the number of attacks down? So they've dropped the number of attacks down on these guys. <laughs> the points cost stays the same. And uh, they were still already squishy. I was going to tell you guys to automatically bring them. You need infiltrators. Because in a book that doesn't have any transports at all, so everything walks up on foot. In a book that doesn't have any deep strike at all, except for these guys. The only way you're ever going to get something to the other side of the table is if you deep strike your infiltrators in. And what do I mean for, for deep strike? They have the infiltrator special rule and at the end of any of your movement phases, up to turn three if you're playing match play, you can drop them in on the backfield uh, more than nine inches away from an enemy unit. So your whole army is moving up the table except for these infiltrators. 
They are an auto-include in the ADMEC lists. They're the only mobility that we have, true mobility. We've got no transports, got no deep striking, got no drop pods, got no flyers, got no this, got no that. Shut up, Winter's too much salt. And now they've lost an attack each. Moving on. Electro Priests and Electro Priests have the ability to do mortal wounds. They're awesome now because they have a 5 up save and a 5 up ignore the save because of their fanatical devotion. Need to get me a bunch of these. Sidonian Dragoons and Iron Strider Ballastari are the quickest thing in this book with movement 10, movement 10. There is now a stratagem where you can spend a command point, roll two dice when you advance and add both of those dice to the advanced roll. So typically these guys might be going 17 inches if you roll the average, which is a long way for Admech and you'll need them. Balastari have the shooting ones. As soon as they move with their heavy weapons, they're hitting on fours instead of threes. And Sidonian Dragoons have the lances again. So if they smack you in close combat, then they're gonna, on sixes to hit, Every hit counts as three hits, and as a base strength eight, strength five, but plus three for the taser lance. A base strength eight, hitting on sixes, it can be quite interesting sometimes. The other thing they can do is they can take the, um, what is it, the Radium Giselle. So you can rip off their lance, give them a Radium Giselle, and it's a two shot, 30 inch range sniper rifle. Why is it important? Because it's in a, it, you can then use these guys to target characters in your enemies' armies. Most sniper rifles, as you know, from the uh, uh, the Imperium books are strength four, so you're wounded on, in cases of infantry, in most cases wounded on fours, and any sixes to wound count as a mortal wound. These guys are strength five at two shots at 30 inch range, so they're typically wounding on threes, typically strength five, and any sixes to wound count as mortal wounds. Um, but it's an expensive model. I think it's a 75 point or a 68 point with the Radium Giselle. It's a 68 point chassis to put it on for two shots that can hit a character. You want three of these or four of these so you can hit a character. Um, snipe them out. Fast attack choice. Then we have the Castellan robots and the Onager dune crawlers. The best things in this book are these two here, are the heavy slots, are the big guns of the Adeptus Mechanicus. So we have no transports, we have no flyers, we have no deep strike capability apart from one. What we've got is lots and lots of guns. And we should be able to outshoot anything in the Imperium, except Guard has longer range and, and bigger, bigger tanks. They're super heavy tanks that they have access to. We don't have them. And um, we should be able to outshoot Tau, which we don't really. Um, and they have transports and the ability to deep strike in. Stop it. Too much salt. Moving on. Electro Priests. Get some Electro Priests in your army. Get the Close Assault ones. They are... Are they the Close Assault ones? No, these are Close Assault ones. Um, get some of these guys. They're very good. And um, they do... When they charge, they do mortal wounds. And when on hit rolls is of six... Wound rolls is a six, they can do mortal wounds, and their damage is D3 a pop anyway at minus two mortal wounds. Get yourself 30 Electro Priests moving up the table with a five up in Vine and a five up Feel No Pain, essentially. Good choice. Get yourself some, this is the best list I can think of for 8th edition. Get yourself a minimum of two units of Sakaar and Infiltrators, because their stub kind carbines are, sorry, their Fleshette Blasters are pistol five shots at strength three. So five of these guys have got 25 shots when they drop in at strength three. Get yourself two of these, that's 50 shots going in at a unit at strength three when they drop in. And there is a stratagem that we'll look at later which allows them to cause mortal wounds on sixes when you're wounding. Um, so you need these guys, you need Sikaran infiltrators because they are the fastest thing in the game. You need Electro Proust because just the ability to do mortal wounds and they're quite cost efficient. And then you need to get yourself either, or I would suggest both. I'd get three of these and three of these minimum. Three units of Castellan robots, three units of Onga Dune Crawlers. Get yourself some big guns in there um, to shoot your way up the field. And once you've got all of this, you're going to need lots and lots of little cheap troops. You're going to need uh, lots and lots of Vanguard or 
rangers to uh, bubble wrap your stuff going up the table. And that's all I would focus on, really. You can get your destroyers, you can get your breaches, but these do the same thing, only better. On a good dune crawlers, um, stalk tanks that uh, have a neutral strength 10, minus 4 AP, neutron laser, very nice. Or you can give it the Icarus one, I've got one over my shoulder. Strength 10 neutron gun or the Icarus sky firing array. So plus one when they're hitting at flyers. So hitting flyers and twos up. Well, three up because flyers will be hard to hit. Once you get into four up, that'll get them back to a three up. Um, or just anything with a fly keyword, I think it just hits them better. And it's got a lot more shots. So yeah, they'd be hitting jump infantry and skimmers and things like that on twos. Or you can go with a big gun and uh, nuke them that way. Honestly, they're both good choices. Uh, 11 armor with a f 11 wings with a 5 up and vulnerable save, they're quite good. Their Amantis force field means that, that if there is one within 6 inches of each, another, they re roll ones for their invulnerable save. So if you take your invulnerable saves on a 5 up and you get a 1, then you get to re roll it and try and get another 5 up. <sighs> Why didn't it beforehand? If you had two within each other, their five up would become a four up. These guys, uh, the breaches, the robots uh, are very good. Lots of toughness, lots of wounds. Have a uh, with the um, they have different battle battle protocols in place. And at the start of the game, they basically got a two up save with a five up and run, or a four up and run, and then a five six. Any shots when you make a save of a five six on the invulnerable save, any shots against them bounce back and cause mortal wounds. Nice. They also can throw down a tremendous amount of firepower, or you can just run them up the table with fists and flamers, advancing every step of the way to punch and uh, deal death in your opponent's lines. And to be honest, in eighth edition, because the ad mech forces are so slow. I think there's a lot to be said for having two units of these guys now with flamers and fists, just running up the table as fast as you can, trying to get that board position, trying to force your opponent to make some bad decisions because they're just so resilient. You can change their battle protocols. So their two up, four up becomes a three up, five up. It still bounces back. Um, she, uh, save and vulnerable saves on on a six to cause more wounds on the enemy, and you can change that so they can fire their guns twice, or change that so they can assault twice. Firing your guns twice sounds like a good idea, but they can't move, and then your opponent can maneuver around to avoid their shots, or can put an assassin right in front of them, so you and that's the only thing you can see. So you're suddenly hitting them on sixes rather than shooting past them to hit the uh, the juicy stuff behind. Um. Leave them with the Aegis Protocol on. Only stand still and use them as gun platforms if you intend to leave them right at the back of the board and leave them as gun platforms for the whole game because they're heavy fossil blasters. It's 36 inch range, heavy three, strength six, AP minus two and damage one are juicy weapons and ignores cover essentially. You don't get the plus one for being in cover. Three units of these, three units of these. Get your infiltrators, get your electro priests, get some bubble wrap. Don't worry about Belisarius Cool anymore because no one's going to want to run Mars Forge Worlds anymore. We'll get to it. Get yourself a couple of tech priests or, a, a, or an engine seer. You'll be fine. You've got a strong, as strong as you can get in 8th edition for Admech. And uh, stand and power up and shoot. Drop your infiltrators in. And uh, yeah, that's... That's our only choices. You can bring knight now. Knights have the household keyword. I don't know what it does. And um, we have all five knights in here, the errant, the paladin, the warden, the crusader, and the gallant. They're here. Their points costs are unchanged from the index, but they are all in here. Um, and the rules are unchanged from the index. That's another thing, by the way. If you don't want to go pure Adeptus Mechanicus, I suppose what you could do is just bring out a bunch of knights. Bring in three, four knights and a list is great. Do it. But then again, you wouldn't, you'd would bring a detachment with your Adeptus Mechanicus units in and then bring one super heavy detachment with these guys in. From this book, by the way, you wouldn't bring it from the index because there is one stratagem that can help knights out. I've talked about stratagems a lot. Let's jump there straight away. So here are the stratagems. We've got 
three pages of them, which is more than a death guard, but six of these are Forge World specific. You can only use them if you're Forge World Mards, Metallica, Lucius, something like that. And the best stratagem is this one for one point rotate iron shields. Use the stratagem when an enemy unit targets your knight. And that knight has a plus one to his invulnerable save until the end of the phase. Remember, you could do this essentially in every shooting phase. Turn one, your knight is targeted, spend a command point, give it a four up and bun. Turn two, your knight is targeted, spend a command point, give it a four up and bun. Uh, you would pick a crusader, that's the one with all the guns. Uh, the one with the rapid fire battle cannon and the thermal lance or the um, rotating Avenger Gatling. Pick the one with the guns, keep it at the backfield, give it a bubble wrap, give it a four up and vulnerable sable game. Put a um, tech priest next to it and heal a wound a turn, heal a wound a turn, heal a wound a turn. An expensive use for that tech priest, but they can do it. And uh, increase the survivability of that knight from one third per shot that hits it to 50-50 chance per shot that hits it. That's a very good one. Some of these are quite good and some of these are not. Two command points each. These are about changing your canticles of the Omnissiah. Uh, Zealous Congregation is good if you bring Electro Peace. You basically spend three command points. Three! and they can fight again. This is a unit that does mortal wounds, by the way, that charges in and hits, and then hits again for three command points. <sighs> Hugely expensive, but there'll be some times when that is game-changing. Two command points, elimination volley. If there is a unit of breaches and, and uh, robots stood next to each other, Castellan robots and destroyers stood next to each other, add one to their hit rolls. Typically, the, both of those units hit on fours, this will make them hit on threes. If you've got a tech priest nearby, you're hitting on threes, re-rolling ones. It's quite nice. If you've got Belisarius Cool, you'll be hitting on fours, re-rolling everything, because that's what Belisarius Cool does. That's quite good. Here's some not so good stratagems. Cognus Overwatch Fire, Overwatch with Cognus weapons at full ballistic skill. There's not a lot of Cognus weapons in this book, and what there are aren't great. Pay two command points to have plus one to your armor save for a, an infantry unit that is within three inches of an objective. Great, you modify your armor up by one. In conjunction with Shroud Sam, that will put destroyers from a four up all the way to a two up or infiltrators or, or, or infiltrators or um, uh, rangers uh, all the way down to a two up in conjunction with that, but it's two command points. And if your enemy targets that unit, with anything stronger than a stiff breeze, it'll burn through those saves anyway. There are some good ones though. Uh, for a command point, you can choose a vehicle to blow up rather than roll a dice. It only affects Adeptus Mechanicus vehicles though, and knights, though they're in this book, are not Adeptus Mechanicus vehicles. And I know that because there's this one here which says Adeptus Mechanicus vehicles or Questors, Questor Mechanicus unit. So there's a clear distinction here between what counts as a Adeptus Mechanicus vehicle, Adeptus Mechanicus vehicle, and a knight. This one's quite nice though, because for one command point you can pick a knight, and until the end of this turn you use the top row for their damage table. Say you've got an Imperial Knight which is left on three wounds, and it's towards the end of the game and he's hitting on fives, and he's in a really bad shape, but you really absolutely want to kill that thing down the table, spend a command point, his machine spirit is resurgent, and he can use the top level of the table and fire and attack on normal weapon skill, normal ballistic skill. Um, it'll be a glorious death, and it's only a command point. I like that one. Doctrinary Imperatives are back, so we've got plus one to Ballistic Skill, plus one to Weapon Skill, essentially. Um, but it, um, you pick a unit. Prior to 8th edition, when you had all of your Skitari on the table, you could pick a Doctriner, and your entire Skitari had plus one Weapon Skill. Um, this gives a unit for a Command Point, and this gives a unit in the Fight Phase plus one. Um, in conjunction, again, with a Canticle of the Omnissiah, this could be very good. You could get their ballistic skill up to a... Uh, the infantry will be hitting on... Vanguard and Rangers will be hitting on twos. Um, your infiltrators, Rust Stalkers, will be hitting on twos. So that would be very good. And there's ways to get it up to a three up if you have um, a, data, a broad spectrum data tether near it, plus two. But in most cases, you're going to be using these to get your ballistic skill or weapon skill from 
three to two anyway, so you don't need to get it all the way up. Um, one command point each, affects one unit. Nice, it's good, it's nice, it's nice. That will help, it will help, it'll help. It would be better if it affected the whole army and be better if you could put it on breaches and destroyers as well, but it affects a unit. Uh, but then we have some specific warlord traits that are specific to certain uh, forge worlds, um, except for this one here. And um, you can, at the start of any of your battle round, select a, a knight, basically, within 12 inches of a character. And that Imperial Knight can gain benefits of the Canticles of the Omnissiah. The only one that you're really going to be looking at here is either Shroud Psalm or Reroll Hit Rolls of One. Again, if you have a Crusader within 12 inches of your Warlord or a character, then... Hitting on threes, rerolling hit rolls of one will be juicy, or getting its three up save to a two up save for. I mean, do you really want to do that on a knight? Probably not, because most of the firepower hit in a knight tends to be the heavy weapon variety with um, high negative modifiers to armor saves. Oh, there's also abilities in here to heal your stuff. Where is that one? Um, Tech Adept, yeah. Uh, if you try to heal something, you spend a command point and they can heal it again, and it can be the same. Vehicle. So you can have a tech priest next to this and he heals D3. You spend the command point and he heals another D3. Remember if that's Belisarius Call next to a knight, Belisarius Call could do D3, D3 heals on him if you want to. So ways to heal your forces as well. Some interesting ones in here. The ones that are going to be used most are the four up invulnerable save, are the to your Imperial Knight, are maybe give a canticle to your knight. Uh, machine Spirit for a Surgeant on Knights, I can see that in use. Elimination Volley will definitely be in use. The uh, Breaches and, um, sorry, Catfron Destroyers and, and Castellan Robots firing together at plus one ballistic skill. Uh, I can't see any other ways to get their ballistic skill up. The only other way you can modify it is by having a Tech Priest nearby, rerolling hit rolls of one or core rerolling everything. And you really want those units, you want you, those Castellan Robots uh, the, the Castellan robots or the Catheron destroyers to be shooting because that's what they do. Wall traits. Um, some of these are, and we, I think we skipped a page. Let's go back here. Let's go back to this one. Congregation of War. So uh, as with all the other books, Soldiers of the Machine God, they have this new unit, this new ability. If you bring a battle-forged army, all troops in this book get objective secured. And we've seen that in the Care Space Marine decks. We've seen that in Death Guard. We've seen that in Space Marines. Basically, troop units uh, will score objectives no matter how many other models there are within range of that objective unless they have a rule that counteracts this. So everyone gets that. And they get Forge World Dogma, which affects those with the Forge World keyword. So it won't affect your knights because they have the household keyword. They don't have the forward world keyword. So this stuff affects everything but knights. And some of it's good and some of it is really not good. Let's go through this in detail. So Mars. For Mars, you basically, if you pick forward world Mars, you roll two dice for the Canticles of the Omnissiah and you get both of them unless you roll doubles and you just get one. That's nice because that helps every single turn. But let's face it, you if you played Admech out there, I, you'll know that there's turns where you've rolled for a Canticle and it hasn't helped you at all. There will be turns where this doesn't help you because the dice screw you over, or there will be turns where it's turn five and you've got so few things left on the table anyway, it doesn't really matter. So it's a nice one. It's You're buffing your units routinely and regularly. Two canticles are in effect every single turn. There'll be occasions where it won't help you, but it's okay, it's okay. It's not the best one. Uh, refusal to yield. So every time, roll a d6 each time a model with this dogma is slain or fle flees. So when this is slain or flees, or when other little models are slain or flees, on a 6+, plus, they stay.
So let's talk about this one for a second because it's not a six up feel no pain. If you've got a unit of 10 Skitari Vanguard one wound model, yes, every time one of them is slain, you'll roll a dice and on a six up they stay. So in the cases of one wound models, it will work like a six up feel no pain and will feel a little bit effective. But in the case of these things, it's when this model is removed or runs away or is slain. This won't get its six up for when, you, when the enemy makes its way all the way through the 11 wounds it has until it loses its very last wound. Then you roll a dice and then on a six, it might stay. So it will come into effect for... I would rather the entire army just had a six up feel no pain so you'd be rolling it all the time. That'd be nice. Um, but they're not doing that. They're saying when the model's taken away. Uh, a six up feel no pain wouldn't work against models fleeing. It doesn't work in the morale phase. This six up does. So it's going to help your one point infantry uh, much more than it will help your multi wound models. And it's essentially if you want this to work uh, to its maximum effect, you're going to want to bring 40, 60, 80 Skatari Vanguard or Skatari Rangers. And that's what it does. It's is it as good as a six up feel no pain? No, I don't think so. I don't think so because you're not rolling it every single time you take a wound, unless you've got loads of little guys. You're only rolling it for the big stuff. Relentless March um, for Metallica. By the way, uh, Belisarius Call is Mars. Belisarius Call. If you bring him, you are getting the Mars Forge World Dogma. If you bring Belisarius Call and stick him in any one of these other. Uh, forge worlds you better have a really good narrative reason for bringing him or the tournament that you're playing allows you or your opponent just says yeah your Belisarius call isn't from Mars he's really from Lucius or he's really from Metallica or he's really from and you and your opponent can agree on that if you want to but as written a call comes from Mars so you as written you shouldn't take him for any of these other forge worlds unless you have your opponent's ag agreement or unless the tournament allows it, etc., etc. Metallica, um, when they move, uh, when they advance, they ignore the penalty for firing assault weapons, and when they, and all their rapid fire weapons become assault weapons. So this one is telling you to bring little guys as well. This guy is telling you to bring as many assault weapons really as you can, or as much rapid fire weaponry as you can. So we're typically looking at um rangers here this is the only real thing it will affect i can't really think of anything else that will really come off the page rangers or vanguard vanguard have assault three weaponry and um so when they move forward they're hitting on fours rather than threes this will make them hit on threes again little guys little guys is that great no is that great this isn't gonna be game changing stuff lucius when it, making saving throws with this dogma Treat enemy attacks with an armor penetration characteristic of one as having an armor penetration characteristic of zero instead. This is one of the best ones in here. This is army wide. Everything in your army that gets wounded by an AP1 weapon. We're talking heavy bolters. We're talking assault cannons. We're talking Necron um, uh, gauss flares. We're talking close combat as well, I think. When it makes saving throws, yeah. It doesn't distinguish between the fight phase or the shooting phase. Whenever you're taking minus one AP hits, it always counts as AP zero. And with the with the amount of minus one AP shots out there, um, Space Marine bolt rifles are strength four minus one AP. They will all be minus. They will all be AP zero. This is army wide. This will affect everything that has the Forge World Dogma throughout the entire game. This one's very good. I like it. Now imagine you're getting shot at by an AP minus one bolter. So your four up save becomes a five up. You have this dogma, your four up stays a four up. And then you've also got shroud sum in effect. Your four up becomes a three up save. Uh, it's, a, it's a difference of two. You've gone all the way from a five up save down to a three up save by having this forge world and by having that uh, 
Canticle of the Omnisiren affects Shroud Sun, and there is a way in the stratagems of buying the same Canticle back. It costs you two command points, but if you really need to, you can buy the same one back again if you don't want to roll for it. You could roll for it, and then when the roll is bad and it isn't what you want, then spend the command, spend the command point to get the one back again. But army-wide buff is a good one. Staunch defenders, when they fire overwatch, they hit on fives instead of sixes. Is terrible because how many times is your army being charged? How good are ad making close combat? Anyway, not very good, just a couple of select units. And hitting on fives and hitting on sixes with some weaponry that you have. So basically, you've got to be in a bad place beforehand. Your, your enemy is choosing to charge at you and you're hitting on fives instead of sixes. It's not army wide in the sense that this is army wide and helping you every turn. But the best one, Stiggy's Eight. Um, your opponent subtracts one from their hit rolls when shooting at units with this dogma if they're more than 12 inches away. Your entire army in first turn should be more than 12 inches away, or most of your army through, a large part of your army through the majority of the game will be more than 12 inches away from your opponent. It's like the Raven Guard tactic or the other one in the Chaos Space Marine book. Your army is minus one to hit more than 12 inches away. So Stiggy's Eight and Lucius the Solar Blessing are the, in my humble opinion, the two best Forge World Dogmas here. This is going to come into effect a lot, minus one to hit. And again, with Shroud Simon Effect, minus one to hit, plus one to your armor. Groovy. This one, uh, my, uh, minus one AP weapons become zero because the prevalence of minus one AP weapons in the game, that one's juicy. And what was Riser again? I forgot. You can reroll wound rolls of one in the fight phase. Yeah, so situational doesn't affect your entire army. Situational Overwatch doesn't affect your... It does affect your entire army, but you're not going to use it turn after turn after turn in the way that Stiggy's 8 is going to come to effect, Lucius 8 is going to come to effect. These ones benefit little Griblies running around all over the place. You're going to want to play Lucius. You're going to want to play Stiggy's 8. Moving on. They have some stratagems which... Are okay, and then we have warlord traits. Mars. So if you're bringing Belisarius, cool. Your uh, Canticles of the Omnisiren, not Canticles. What was it? Forge World. Your Forge World doctrine is that you roll two dice when you are selecting your Canticle of the Omnisiren, and he increases his aura of six inches, which is re-roll everything to nine inches. That's the Mars warlord trait here. That's what Mars does. Greya, you can shoot assault and rapid fire weapons into close combat, which is nice. Again, little grid bleeds, and it works well with their um, uh, Forge World Dogma. And Metallica, um, it, you can fall back and shoot, but minus one to hit, a bit like the Ultra Means one. Lucius, plus one to your invulnerable save for your Warlord. Um, Agrippina, all damage suffered by your Warlord is reduced by one. Stiggy's eight. Uh, add one to wound rolls made for your warlord against units that do not have the chaos imperium or unland faction keywords and rise a first hand field testing when setting up your warlord choose one of their weapons this cannot be an arcana it can't be a relic and increase the strength and damage characteristics of that weapon by one so nothing great except for these two the ability to shoot into close combat which you particularly don't want to be in close combat or fall back and shoot metallica is the best of the warlord traits here there are some very average Warlord traits that you can just pick as well. Um, the best one is the one where you heal one a turn. Where is it? I meant this one. Uh, when your Warlord uses an ability to repair a friendly model, it gains one additional wound. So your Warlord at the back healing that knight, unless it's Call, will be doing one wound. And every time he heals, he could be doing two wounds. Or on these things, we'll be doing D3 plus one wounds. You, you need these things to get hurt first to benefit from that ability. They're going to get hurt anyway, so it's going to come into effect. Um, and re-roll the dice when you can a, a Canticle of the Omnissiah. This one um, will be useful for everyone, and the rest are a bit meh. Um, the Death Guard ones were just much better. Relics. We've got two pages of relics here. Um, obviously, you can see specific weapons. You can change your axe. You can uh, change the uncreated gauntlet. Things to make your relics, your your 
chosen weapons already better. You swap out your Omniscient Axe and give them this. You can't give any of these relics to Call because he already has a relic, the Solar Atomizer. There are six here that are specific to uh, Forge Worlds, like Agrippina, Sticky Zate, uh, Metallica, things like that. So there's six that are specific for Forge Worlds only. And some of the old ones, uh, favorite ones and good ones have come back again, such as the RP. Arco Caduceus of Arcan Land, Auto Caduceus of Arcan Land. The Omniscience Mask is back. These used to go on the uh, Rust Stalkers or Infiltrators and give you reroll to hit. They still give you reroll to hit within six inches, but you can only put it on a character now. So that's on a, one of your Warlords. That's on your Tech Priest, Dominus or Tech Priest Engine Seer. And units within six inches rerolling to hit and in the fight phase. Um, but not fearless, but uh, it's part of what the Omniscient Mask was. The Skull of Eldar Nikolai is back. The Reign of the Technomata is back. All of these are versions of the relics that we were used to from 7th edition, but slightly watered down. Oh yeah, this one is the best one. I knew there was something in here where your Warlord gets a wound back. And this is it. The Arca Auto Caduceus of Arcan Land. Stab each your turn. The bearer of this relic heals one wound, so your guy heals a wound. But more than that, every time you roll to repair something, the, uh, an adept, the Master's Machines and Adeptus Mechanicals uh, model, you re-roll the dice to determine how many wounds are regained. So it's D3 re-rollable, and you're healing one wound yourself a turn anyway. And then you pick this one where a necroman, necromechanic where you add one whenever you heal something. So your tech priest is next to one of these guys. He's rolling D3 to heal it a turn. He can re-roll that and he's getting plus one. He's very, very good necro mechanic. That's probably the best one in here. Uh, then we have points and then we have the end. Okay, so that's my review of the Adeptus Mechanicus Codex and I'm dreading it editing this because as I go back through it, I've done a lot of talking now and as I go back through it, I'm going to detect all the salt in my voice. <laughs> um, I, I wanted more. Like, let's talk about the good stuff. Uh, if you bring, I forget which forge word it is, but minus one to hit everything more than 12 inches away or minus one AP, or uh, ignore weapons with a minus one AP value, is powerful. And then uh, spending a couple of those stratagems, so your Imperial Knight has a four up and vulnerable save, or one where your robots and destroyers hit on threes rather than fours, is powerful. Um, being able to heal some of your admech stuff a bit better is powerful. What this book gives you is the Adeptus Mechanicus doing what it does, but a bit better. Uh, some of the units in here, if you pick certain Forge Worlds, will be more resilient and will be able to fire a little bit better, which is great. We needed that. It, we've also got another HQ, bring the Tech Priest Engine Seer, which is great. We needed that. Um, so there are some definite buffs in here, and I'm sure there's people out there that are going to make it really sing. The main issues that I have is Adeptus Mechanicus need transports or need the ability to deep strike, need the ability to move around the battlefield. They're the only army that really doesn't have it. Orcs can deep strike, Tau can deep strike, uh, even Nids can deep strike. Everything can either deep strike or have transports or have uh, flyers or, tr or ways to get up the battlefield very, very quickly. And then here we have infiltrators and one stratagem that affects one of the forge worlds. I forget which one it is, but there is a stratagem where you can move a unit up. And that's it. So it, we, have, we have got a very static force that moves forward, healing each other, shooting the crap out of everything in our way. And in Maelstrom of War games, the Adeptus Mechanicus tends to struggle if it's a solo army and to really help them sing. You need to ally them in with a patrol detachment or battalion detachment or something else to give them a bit more, uh, to give them either that mobility that they're lacking or to bring a conscript meat shield to protect your more expensive units behind because the vanguard and the rangers are not fearless and they will run away. If you bring a unit of 10 of them, because they're so squishy, they'll pop and then they will run away. Um, with that, those two Forge Worlds, maybe that will negate some of that running away a bit, but it doesn't fix the problem, it puts a band-aid over it. Um, 
So it's here of the all the new codexes that have come out so far. Um, this is the one that um, that shows the least adjustments from the index. Even the Chaos Space Marine book, which had no new units in it, what they did with obliterators and what they did with some of their Forge World equivalents or Chapter Tactics equivalent, like Berserkers, um, added, I thought, quite um, an amount of flavour to them. And I've played Chaos, against Chaos Space Marines a couple of times, and there is a notable difference between before and after the index uh, and the Chaos Space Marine codex. I'm hoping to see the same thing with Adeptus Mechanicus. The Penance and Forge, my army, um, is uh, is allied with Mars, but for playtesting purposes for this channel, I will be doing a couple of battle reports. Hopefully you'll see them very soon, using some of the other Forge World chapter tactics. Closing thoughts. The Adeptus Mechanicus Codex does make Adeptus Mechanicus a bit stronger. I think it's missed out on a couple of tricks. Uh, the holy requisition of formation in 7th edition allowing you to deep strike way up, way up the board. We needed something like that in here and it's not here. Um, I look forward to Games Workshop releasing transports finally or releasing new models finally. Or Forge World getting around to writing the um, Imperial Armour book with uh, uh, the Deptus Mechanicus in it so I can add some new stuff to my army. Um, for new players out there, it's a very easy army to get to grips with because it doesn't do anything complicated. It moves forward, shoots loads of stuff, and you heal it as it goes. Um, there's no real outflanking or deep striking shenanigans. I should stop talking about it. I'm going to stop talking about it. So yeah, that's the review of my book. Uh, I hope this doesn't come across so bad. It's, it's not the best. It's okay. It's good. It's an improvement. I'm going to shut up. So thank you very much for watching i hope games workshop aren't too hacked off with this review because you know they gave me this to review for free and i have um if you want to support me um you can choose to support me by uh, subscribing to witness seo on demand for more stuff behind the scenes for extra money off wargamesuk.co.uk some story trans lots of back reports on there now one will be going up at the weekend with uh the warhound titan versus five imperial knights so yeah um thanks for watching <laughs> happy wargaming